guys, and welcome to another episode of Everyday EDC. My name is Tyler, and today we are going to do something kind of interesting. This is going to be a little bit different than usual. As you can see, this is my Savivi Backlash Blade. If you guys remember, go check out a couple videos ago, probably, I don't know, three weeks. You will see how I jacked up this blade. I tried to do an Everyday EDC logo in it. You can see the S etching right there. And it came out like shit, so I started working on cleaning up this blade. In the meantime, I ended up getting the Sencut Actius? Actium? Something like that. One of the two, I'll, I'll correct it in the freaking uh, title. But the point of this being is that if you look, what do we notice? These things are like the exact same blade to some extent. This one's slightly taller, uh, but I mean, it's it's pretty much the same exact blade, same exact ergonomics. So I am gonna call this kind of the mini backlash, but in order to do so, I have to be able to do that. Now in order to, <laughs> must be redundant. I'm gonna compare these two. I'm gonna rip both of these knives apart on video. Take them all apart. We're gonna see all the guts. We're gonna compare all the guts. I'm gonna put them back together and I'm gonna give my overall thoughts on the pluses and minuses of either by comparison of the other. Um, this isn't a review on the Actium, although I may not do one on there because I'm gonna hit a lot of the same points. So if you guys want to see a review on this, just let me know in the comments, but I think after this will be enough to where I don't need to review this. Granted, I would love to. It's easy content for me to do, but I don't want to be redundant with this stuff. So, if you guys see or hear, like, sound bites cut out or fast-forwarded through this, as I said before, I'm not Nick Shabazz. I am not good enough to continuously tear apart a knife and be entertaining at the same time. I might be, and I might not. He can do it consistently awesomely. The dude's freaking fantastic at it. Unfortunately, Tyler is not, so I may fast-forward through a lot of this. We'll see. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take apart the whole backlash. Now, keep in mind, this is the backlash with the ebony scales, so that does play a little bit of a part, but not a huge, not a huge factor here. So the bits I'm really definitely going to need are a T8, or three seek, so it's Jack or something else, T8, and T6. Those are probably the only two bits that I'm going to need for this whole process. So what I do with all my parts is I'm taking them apart, um, I splash them on my table. No, I <laughs> I uh, put them in just a dish soap solution, and it serves two purposes. It helps clean them off a little bit, but realistically I'm putting them in a little container, and we all know how taking these things apart, if you have, what it's like, and what happens to all your parts if you lose them. And, you know, it's cheap-ass parts, like a little screw, not a big deal. Well, it is a big deal if you can't get your freaking hands on one. So, that's the whole purpose of it. Once again, the reason I'm doing this is I believe the Actium and Backlash are two of the same exact cloth. I think these two guys are so closely related that I think the backlash came first and because they're getting rid of the backlash, I think uh, they made a send cut version of it that, you know, which is cool, but on the other side, we all love the backlash. Such a pain in the friggin' A. I might have actually bought something from Tractor Supply, that, like a mini like a wrench set that'll help me so I don't lose this stuff. And it doesn't do anything. This, ladies and gentlemen, is Captain Frickin' Overkill. I call him Captain Overkill because it is a tool that is probably 14 times the size of a tool that I actually need. But, it is also the only tool that I have readily available that can do what I need it to do. 
and that is keep these backspacers from spinning in place as I'm twisting out the screws. You don't want to squeeze too tight, you will damage your backspacers, but you also don't want to sit there and fight with your freaking screws the whole time. All right. Now remember, put all you don't have to put your stuff in a solution when you're taking it apart, but definitely put your stuff in a little cup or something. It will drive you nuts if you lose a part. And if you have carpet, I mean carpet's great, it catches something, but good luck. You're going to grab a freaking flashlight and look like a jackass on the ground trying to catch or trying to find it exactly what you're looking for. I'm excited to do this because I really loved the backlash. Those of you that know me from the beginning know that the backlash was like, like I almost sent it back because it came dull and you could tell somebody else had used it at one point in time and you're like, what the f So I get it and I was so pissed. But then I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna sharpen this thing up myself. So I did a really half-ass sharpening job because I didn't know what I was doing. And I kind of brought it back to life, and it was the first sharpening job that I did that I was able to, like, cut stuff with. <laughs> it's going to sound stupid, but, you know, those of you that have gone along the manual sharpening journey, you're going to know what I'm talking about. But it was the first one that I was really able to accomplish anything with that was significant that I was proud of, right? And it just kind of, like, grew on me from there. So this is what the Actium blade looks like outside. Here's the bearings. Zoop. Get the bearings in there. Interestingly enough. Ooh. Well, there's one cheap note. Not cheap, but I have a flashlight nearby. So this pivot on the sand cut is not, it doesn't appear to be. This thing is not captive whatsoever. There's the first probable difference that we found, because I'm 90% sure the one on the backlash is captive. But, moving on. So this thing is new, and it's the first time I've taken it apart, but very, very easy to take apart. There's nothing, like, stuck. They use blue Loctite in certain places, but it's not obnoxious. Probably has, and we'll count it later, probably has the same amount of freaking hardware. FYI, here's the two pocket clips, just so you guys can see. I'll do, you know what, I'll do a comparison of everything as I go through. So hold on, is what I'm saying. Hold, hold on. Alright, so here is everything. Can I see it on there? Yeah. Now I'm going to compare the, compare the pieces piece by piece, one for one. And then we're going to put this guy, we're going to clean him up, put him back together, take the specs on both, and then I'll give my overall thoughts on which one's better, and etc. So, here is one side of the scales. The left side is the send cut, and the right side is the ebony wood for the backlash. Here's the other side of the scales. This is the sun cut. This is the backlash. So cool to note, there is milling on both models, which is nice. And actually, this has more milling on one side, which is the sun cut than the backlash. It's just the bigger pieces you're taking out, something like that. So you are getting a higher weight relief, but now when you go to the uh, liner lock side, there's nothing really on the sun cut. 
Let's see, but the cool thing is, is let's really take a look here. This is where some of the rubber meets the road to start with. So if you look top to bottom, let's go lighter. So if you look top to bottom, these liners, let's see. They are not the same size. The send cuts, and by that I mean the send cut actually is a little bit deeper. It goes a little bit further down, which would make it more easy to use. Um, easier in the sense that you, it would be, you get more leverage pushing on there than you do here. Now, that all depends on the steel and the malleability, etc., 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 but the design is the exact same. Starting with the detent ball, all the way down to the little circular cutout at the bottom, right here. So you can tell they're kind of cut from the same cloth, right? Like, there's there's something there that's... There's something there that wasn't there before. Beauty and the Beast. Alright. Yeah, it's obnoxious. So here are the two pocket clips. And I keep putting my flashlight on it, or Jake's flashlight rather, because I feel like it's dark. And with these little pieces, you kind of want to see everything. So... Here are those two. Generically the same. So the main difference here is that the send cut, which is this one on the right, it's it's weird, it's bent. Let's take a look. See how that's bent? It's kind of a, it's gonna add a little bit more tension than the backlash. Those are the two. The backlash is the longer one. So, and this is actually a really nice pocket clip for the send cut. If I were to grade anything, I think that is an upgrade. That's the first real upgrade that I've seen so far in taking these two apart, but you know, take that for what you will. Oh yeah, I was like, what the hell happened to my blade? So here's the two blades. The one on the left being the backlash, the black one being the sun cut. And now obviously the difference is the sun cut comes just for fidgety guys. The black and black is difficult. It's got a thumb stud. Uh, that's just for fidgeters because you have a flipper tab too. So you can do either or. But the unique part is... I don't know why I'm so unhappy with this lighting thing. The unique part is, is we have this wedge. There. Let's do this. So we have this wedge. That goes all the top side right here. Right? And into a flat into the secondary grind, or the primary grind, whichever one comes first, I forgot. Then we have this really steep thumb ramp with all this heavy jimping right here. See that? Then we have those, you know, the thumb studs. Now, we have a lighter, it's not as steep thumb ramp right here, but we have the swedge all along the top and a shorter flat into a hollow grind. This, I believe, is also a hollow grind. So they're both hollow ground. They're both going to be stupid slicey. Um, pretty cool. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to clean these up. I'm going to sp spray a little bit of frog lube on there. This isn't frog lube. This is a frog lube cleaning agent. So I'm going to spray them down with this, wipe them all down, uh, lube them up, get them back together. If I have to recenter them, I will get them centered. And I'll do all that on camera, but I'm going to fast forward the shit out of it, play some cool music, and... Uh, yeah, I would love to try and add something cool in the middle of there. I don't have anything cool. But I'm going to leave it all up there so you guys can see if you'd like to. So, here we go. So, stopping the video real quick, notice these lines on this DLC coating, or whatever this is, um, really, really cool. I haven't been able to get them off yet, but this was from me cutting open an aluminum can the other day, okay? Now, the aluminum rubbed off on this to the point where it was looking really bad, like I chipped everything. I'm pretty sure those lines 
are just aluminum dust stuck in this coating now. That's how strong this coating is for a $30 knife. It hasn't chipped, it feels smooth. So just wanted to put that out there that I'm pretty sure this is a really good coating on this blade. All right, so we're stopping the video real quick to explain this for people who aren't too familiar with it. Um, before I watched a few videos, it took me a while to realize the most efficient way to build a knife or rebuild a knife. So with the Civivi, we do have the locking pivot. So what I do is I put the pivot in the locked position because it locks into the scales, and then I set it upside down like this. Now what you can do to follow this up is, is you can put the spacers in, and screw in a screw kind of loosely so that your body stays together while you're putting in the blade, etc. You know, you can kind of build off of this because trying to wedge it in and fandangle it after this is just a pain in the ass. So what I just did right there is this area where the pivot goes through and the bearings go on and they ride on there was really, really dirty. It had a lot of gunk on there. So you want to get that really clean for that super smooth action. Now I can use a plethora of different lubes. I have my frog lube, my blade lube, blue lube. People are gonna walk in my house and be like, dude, you're disgusting, what's wrong with you? And then I have this, which I'm only gonna use that for uh, bearings. So today, I'm just going to use the blade oil, um, save my frog loop a little bit. I just This was cheaper. Uh, I think this will work just fine for the given circumstance. Now let's just do a light twist of the pivot just to get it on there. You never want to just like like obliterate these screws by like just cranking them down. You don't need to ever crank anything down. That's never something that you need to do. So let's notice it's just hand tight and the purpose is, is to get the scales together. Now what we'll do is before I lock tie anything, I'm gonna make sure this blade is centered. So what that means is I am gonna, using Metal Complex's uh, blade centering technique, I am going to kind of take it to the next level. And by that I mean, I'm going to put the screws in, tighten everything down, get the action to where I want it to be, and the centering to where I want it to be, and then I will take everything out and lock tie it one by one. Now the purpose of that is, is it kind of saves me a step where if I were to lock tie them now, but then I have to take out one side just because, I mean that's annoying. Hey, you guys haven't noticed I bent the tip on this guy. That's annoying. Everything's annoying. Everything is awesome. So despite the tip being bent, this thing is centered. There's no blade play. The action, pretty good. I would call that comfortable. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to leave the pocket clip off. So I'm not gonna Loctite these on camera. This is already kind of going on much longer than I anticipated, and it's going to be a pain in the ass to deal with.
And that's what you get because now both are spinning, so that's going to be not too bad, but annoying enough. A little bit of blade play side to side. Good action. Perfect centering. All right. Check the blade play. Still side to side blade play. Huh? No blade play. Action is fine and centering is perfect. All right. So I'm going to clean up here and then we are going to get into the portion where I put this back into the backlash apparently. A. And B, where I start comparing these two knives.